Hallelujah. We give all praise and honor unto Almighty Yahweh and unto His Son, Yahshua, our precious Mashiach, our Redeemer, our soon coming King. We do total Yah for Him, the King of the universe. I think that's a phrase that we as a people have to really get into. We have to really come to understand the significance of knowing that He is the King of the universe. We tend to forget things like that. We just think in religious terminology. And we're going to have to teach on that and focus our attention all the more on not being so religious, but more so being able to just openly and honestly serve Almighty Yahweh. Let me stop and thank each and every one of you, no matter how small or how great your contributions have been toward the assembly of Yahweh here that the word may be able to go forth freely. We do total you for each and everything. We realize that the tightness of the situations on a global scale is attempting to strangulate us all. But nevertheless, we thank Yahweh for the ability to endure, to press on for your calls, for your letters, for your offerings. All that has been done, we total y'all for that, for your prayers just for general concern and or well wishes. We told y'all for each and every one of you, we keep you all in our prayers as well. I do want to remind you that in your prayer, as you pray, you may not know each and every Israelite or each and every condition that we are under, but Yahweh knows as well as he knows the thoughts and intents of our heart. So when you pray, just keep one another in mind in the general sense and Yahweh will do the rest and he'll take care of that. So I do want to bring that to our attention. I got a remotely hot topic to touch on tonight. I'll try to keep this Wednesday night Torah study to under one hour, but more than likely I'll go over. I'll apologize far in advance, but I think this will be well worth it in the event you are able to track and or trace some of my research. A lot of times it pains me, not in the sense to be in the forefront, in the sense that a lot of people are looking for it, but it is true. Yahweh didn't send everybody to step out in the forefront or to be there, the ones always standing in the gap. There is a lot of pain and pressure with that or associated with preaching and teaching that a lot of times our brothers just do not fully comprehend. But we told it, y'all, for the efforts nonetheless, even by way as the Apostle Shaul says, some preach Hamashiach of truth and sincerity and others of falsehood, envy and strife. But nevertheless, either way, Hamashiach is preached. We do have to stand firm on the fact that Yahshua is king. And it is Almighty Yah's will that he be king. There's no cutting back of the crime rate. I was listening to the evening news just prior to leaving. They were saying when you're wondering just when will this thing let up or ease up. It's not going to ease up. It's not going to let up. It's going to actually grow worse. But the crime rate that I want to talk to you about tonight is a crime rate mentioned in Scripture that we as Yahweh's people had really best begin to prepare ourselves to understand. It is a crime rate that is scheduled to escalate. And escalate to a point that it will wage an all-out assault on the people of Yahweh. I will say on the children of Israel first and on all the people of any nation or multitude or ethnic group that will turn to Almighty Yahweh. To Yisrael first and unto all nations. You're going to be persecuted if you continue in this way any length of time. I pray that we all come to an understanding of that, that we look deeply into the word of Almighty Yahweh. Earlier in the week, I was teaching a class to some young people about the public safety measures in construction and heavy equipment. And I mentioned something. And when we took the break, I mentioned the advances in technology. And I didn't remember putting a magazine article in my bag. But I had put something in my bag that I now know it was Abba Yahweh's will that I accidentally took it with me, I'll say on purpose, and was able to read this specific article, which talked about the military technology, the advances in robotics and different things. The next phases of robotics were based upon giving robots the sense of human touch. 
so that they could detect what they were touching and know how much strength to actually apply just like a human. You know that a newborn child, they'll grab their parent's finger or their pinky and they'll hold on to it and they'll squeeze. Babies have a little grip. Well, they were talking and discussing in the article about the development of the power and the grip of some of the robotics that they have and the stuff that is advancing in this society is so intense that you wouldn't believe it and yet you would do well to believe that if there are robots and things of that nature walking among you, I know everybody wouldn't believe it. I know everybody would think you're crazy or conspiracy theorist, but know for certain Hollywood as the devil's mouthpiece. If they can put it out there and project it in that manner, trust me, as Elder Johnson said well over 30 years ago, if they can put it out there, then they either already can do it or they're not far from perfecting it. I read and research a lot of this stuff. I thank Abba Yahweh for it and I realize humbly that a lot of times the research and the analysis that I give to the people was a gift from Yahweh. So as soon as I get the information, I would always get it and get it up off of me. That way we all could share in the same levels of understanding. I told her Yahweh for giving the prophets and the apostles that type of spirit so that as we're commanded in scripture to pray that the Ruach that was upon the apostles and prophets of old be upon us as well. So we told y'all for the effort and or the ability to do it. I take no credit for nothing that I find because I am not that great of a researcher that I can go and reveal all the secrets. But I'll tell you this. Daniel was an extremely wise man in the Torah of Yahweh and in the proper way of living. He wasn't living and standing around guessing. Daniel was living this thing the way Yahweh commands that we live it. Which is why I always say to you, calm down. Strive. Seek and or search out. This is, though we have the book, there's not a process of time where you're going to go through the book and find the Hebrew way to chew your food. There's no Hebrew way to chew your food. You chew according to the flexes and the capabilities of the jawbone and the mouth to maneuver the way Abba Yahweh intended it to be done. And we as Yisrael are going to have to come to understand that. We don't need any special signs or signals or treatments to draw upon ourselves or draw any special attention to ourselves. All we really want to do is serve Almighty Yahweh. As we teach the word and as the word goes forward, the attention to the word of Yahweh will draw to itself. Those that will either hear it or those that will forbear it. But we don't have to go out of our way to draw any special attention to ourselves. We just have to simply obey. And as we strive and struggle to obey, Keep in mind persecutions, embarrassments. Most people <clears throat> do not like to be embarrassed. Embarrassment is not a good feeling. I don't care what it is. You can fall in front of a hundred people. Trust me, you get back up and not be hurt or whatever. You know someone somewhere laughed and there was a certain feeling that comes along with it. Well, in serving Yahweh, you bear that sort of feeling constantly, continually, because you will suffer humiliation just as Yahshua HaMashiach went through the humiliation as our Kodesh one, that we might be saved. So we told a y'all for that. I want to talk to you tonight about how technology will drive the great tribulation. We're going to need to understand that. And I, and I, and I want to ask my dear brothers, who's in any of you, it's all right to share these videos off this channel. Where I, I admit it, I do not mind. I do not care. I do not hide. I uh, there's a lot of pain and pressure associated with leadership. Sometimes a lot of pain and pressure just being associated with yourself. So I do not mind that people share the material, the information, but let's not get greedy for vain glory, seeking to share this so that, as Brother Steve Coakley said years ago, that we might look good simply for having the information. Sometimes just having the information and not knowing how to process it is not a good look at all. So I've had many people contact me about books that I've quoted and things that I've read. One brother told me, he said, man, look, I got the book, man. I was going through it. I was reading through it, man. I like the concept and the way you broke it down, but I really can't do much with the book. And it ain't no pictures in it. And that's not to belittle him or embarrass him by any means, but we do expect everything to be easy. Some things are just going to be a little difficult and we have to make it through. That's why the scripture says many are the trials of the righteous, but Yahweh bringeth them out of them all. He didn't say one or two of your trial. He said he bring the righteous out of them all. 
which now means you can't pretend to be righteous. You have to strive simply to live it, that Yahweh will show proof of your righteousness unto you by delivering you out of every one of your trials. We must bear that in mind. It's not how meek we pretend to be. It's not how sharp we strive to dress. It's not how much tithing or offering we give. It is sincerely about how well we honor and obey Abba Yahweh. Central point. Daniel was a wise man. But let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 28. I want you to hear what Abba Yahweh said about Daniel and what he said about Shaitan. We need to understand this. Again, Ezekiel 28, 1. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am Elohim. I sit in the seat of Elohim, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not Elohim, though thou set thine heart as the heart of Elohim. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. The surveillance and the technologies of the world today. Keep up with the thinking of this man whom Yahweh had to remind that he was just a man. The surveillance, the technologies, the capabilities, banking, cellular phones, mass technology today. Keep up with the thinking of this man who was filled with the Ruach of Shaitan in such a way that he got proud. Last week, week before last now, I was looking at the newspaper, I tell you, I buy specific newspapers sometimes. People say, well, Elder, when do you get time to read the scriptures, the newspaper and books and all? I don't know. I just know Yahweh Baruch me and I'm able to do it. Sometimes I look up and realize I done read it and didn't even realize when I finished it. So the New York Times last Wednesday, Wednesday, July 27th, 2020, ran an interesting article about China's surveillance state. Now, this was the newspaper article here. And I want everybody to understand, you don't have to really backtrack and go find the article unless you just got that kind of time where you can go through and find it, whatever. But here it is, China's surveillance state. And it's got 15 pages of things that were pulled from the Chinese government's websites and different things. They want the surveillance in there to be fully, uh, what's the word, above board. So when contractors that are software companies or technology companies apply for uh, government grants to get in and to do different things, they want them to just sign up for it and make everything above board. So they do that. But the article opens up and it just begins to deal with China's expanding surveillance state. And I noticed four things that immediately struck me as interesting. They talked about how China and America, even as right now, Nancy Pelosi having gone to China, uh, Taiwan and the Chinese were mad about it, you know, letting America know, you don't come over here in our waters doing whatever you want to do. America as a superpower is waning. Let us know and understand that she is waning. So they're just holding on, grabbing that straw, straining that and that, swallowing a camel, super tanker and some more stuff. At any rate, four things that stuck out. The Chinese police analyze human behaviors to ensure Facial recognition cameras capture as much activity as possible. This is why they say that. They say that of the billion or so uh, surveillance cameras that are in the world. Let me make sure I got that right. Of the billion or so surveillance cameras that are in the world, the great majority of them. In fact, analysts estimate that more than half of the world's nearly one billion surveillance cameras are in China. So they're saying there's about a billion surveillance cameras in the world already watching people and watching everything with more to come with these technology companies moving forward, doing what they're doing. Tonight, I just want to explain briefly to you how technology will drive the great tribulation. A lot of you wonder why sometimes you want to send an offering or donation and we don't have PayPal or uh, Zelle or some of the other things. I don't bother a lot of the electronic stuff. We have to play it the way Abba Yah commands that we play it until the damn thing folds. And trust me, it is folding, whether we want to believe it or not. Sometimes it's difficult to teach people. There are some young men that I, I deal with here. And a uh, young man, he's uh, he probably just about ready to turn 40 or so. He prides himself on being able to challenge or debate or one up whatever it is that I post or put specific research material out there. 
but he will not go to the ignition switch or the starting point of all my research, which is the scripture. I read Yahweh's word and work my way backward or outward from there. I don't read first and then trace it to the Bible. I read the Bible, the scriptures, the Torah, whatever you prefer to call it. I read that first and see Yahweh's word as it is and then look at the world and see those things unfolding. Young people today, they want to do everything backward because this is what society has done to us and it has brought us to the brink of our own demise as well. With these four things in mind, and America and China being formal trade partners, there's not so much of a Cold War as a dispute as we think there is, as there is an alliance that nobody really wants to tell us about. The goal is to bring all the same technologies that they have in China to America and every other part of the globe and to do it with an extremely alarming and accelerated pace. So you as Israel must really properly prepare yourselves in a world grappling with the throes of a pandemic, crisis situations and wars and rumors of wars. All of these things are being used as stepping stones for what they're terming as the great reset there's no reset there's really just the reset of yashua setting up a kingdom wherein will dwell righteousness success and happiness forever and ever this is it for man and man's rule let me be clear china's second move is that the authorities are using phone trackers to link people's digital lives to their physical movements which mean they got devices like wi-fi sniffers and is IMSI catchers that glean information straight from the phone in their vicinity, which allow the police to track or targets every movement. We all know this type of surveillance and technology is there, but China has made it so legal that they have forced the people to just get comfortable with being surveilled 24 hours a day, basically seven days a week. The third thing is that the police in China are starting to collect voice prints using sound recorders attached to their facial recognition camera. So now your face might not be clear, but because you're talking to somebody in the airport and they can't really see who you are, there's enough voice print and voice recognition to tie the voice to the face that they may have seen on the technology cameras somewhere in the history of the country. All of these things are slowly but surely being implemented and brought to the shores of America and will be there until the damn thing goes down. Next phase. The governments want to connect all these data points to build comprehensive profiles for citizens which would be accessible throughout the government. Now, they're talking one world government now among the nations. It matters not, man. Look, Russia pulling out of the International Space Station and all this other stuff. Every nation is hiding and harboring its own secrets. See, most of us didn't even learn early in the week. Russia got its own space station up there. And they let America know, look, we withdrawing. We ain't got time to be messing with y'all. How are we going to be at war with a country that you keep on arming to fight us? And then we're going to maintain an alliance with you up in outer space. When they all know that they really want to fight Yahshua when he comes. So then the news broke that Russia has its own damn space station up there. And if it has its own and they pulled out off of America, wouldn't you think that now they will work harder to build their own to sustain themselves? Pay attention to the direction in which technology is going. Don't be overreacting. Don't be doing. Look, don't be calling me and texting me now. Elder Johnson, should I text you ever again in life? Or Elder Johnson, should I pick up the phone and ever call you? Stop. Don't, don't even get started, all right? When I say calm down, I truly do mean calm down. If Yahweh's word says to the devil, you are wiser than Daniel and there is no secret that they can hide from thee, then know for certain that the surveillance and the technology is watching everybody. Remember in the old days, the thieves could break in the house and steal stuff, but unless they got that little bitty TV that sat on top of the other TV, they wouldn't hardly get in the way of no TV. Now the thing is flat. It weighs about nine pounds. He can unplug the thing and run on out the door with it. Couldn't run out the door with the hi-fi systems and all other stuff because it was too big. It took nine people to carry the thing. Well, understand that as the TV got small and flatter, they could just stick it on the wall. And as you looking at it, it can look in the house and get a decent view of almost every perimeter of the floor. So I want you to understand the depth of what it is and what the technology is doing. Again, if Yahweh says to the man filled with the spirit of the devil while simultaneously talking to them both, he let him know there's nothing they can hide from you. I admit it. You got your technology going in the earth. You are an age old spirit. This is what you do. He says, with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasuries. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic. This word traffic in the Hebrew, the rekulah. The rekulah. 
That is your trade and your trade practices or business practices. He says, by that, you have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of Elohim, behold, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. So Yahweh's people are going to have to really see this for what it is and come to understand that the times are getting so crucial now. You ain't got a lot of time for the foolish stuff in the days of old and seeking now, well, I'm going to get my vacation time and I'm going to Honolulu and I'm going to do this. Now is the time more than ever before to really just quietly stand your butt still and wait like the apostle, like the prophet said, stand upon your watch and see what will the answer of Yahweh be. I want to read something real quick. It just brought back to my attention. I'm going to go to Mark 834. I want you to listen to this. Yahshua says something that we have to pay attention to. And he called the people. This is Mark 834. Unto him with his disciplined ones also. And he said unto them. Whosoever will come after me. Let him deny himself. And take up his load or his burden. And follow me. Listen, we got to work some of these pagan words and terms out of our mouth and keep in mind some of the words that some of us think are profanity and all this other stuff. You got to go back and study the etymology of words in these languages to know and understand what is and or is not permissible. Here, some of these words like cross, like Christ, Lord, and all this other stuff that some of you all repeatedly use, you're going to have to pray that Yahweh fulfill the prophecy of Hoshea chapter 2 when he said, I will take away the names of Balaam out of your mouth. There are certain trades and characteristics and cultural dynamics that are associated with Balaam. So Yahweh has to take that stuff away from us. After a while, you start learning the trades and the jobs, some of the things we as Hebrews do. After a while, you look and realize, well, I can't even operate in that profession no more. I can't see a, a Hebrew tattoo artist. I'm just being real now. I, I, just, I just can't see it. Knowing that Yahweh doesn't want Israel making any markings or tattoos on their body. He ain't concerned with the Gentiles. He told you and I not to make the markings or tattoos or drawings. So then we, let's, let's not go do that to somebody else. Let's keep ourselves the way that he's sitting. I'm just using that as an example, y'all. Don't go running saying, yeah, that's the 188th commandment. Don't make the tattoo. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Listen to him go further. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake. And the glad tidings, the same shall find it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? This is the game that the wealthy are playing right now. They're trying to die with the most toys. For he who dies with the most toys wins. Can you imagine that? The people in, I forget what country it is where uh, Jeff Bezos is having one of the world's largest yachts built. Well, they threatened to egg that yacht and tear that yacht to pieces if the people of that country tore down a historic bridge just so when the mass goes up on the yacht that they would be able to fly it out. I mean, sail it out and just take the bridge apart and put it back together. Well, they're saying that they will lose the historical value of the bridge. So then they ended up towing the thing this week, getting it up out of there because he really don't want the poor people to egg his uh, yacht. Imagine that. Yeah, well, we have to understand what a lot of this stuff is leading to because all these rich white folks and rich billionaires, Chinese, Japanese, Africans too, whatever, they don't mean anybody any good because they are in a rich man's club. You have to know this because as the time is drawing near, don't desire to be like them. Again, he asks, well, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore should be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in kabod of his father with the Kodesh Malachim. So he's coming whether the world wants to hear or whether the world wants to believe it or not. He's coming. So we're going to have to understand that. Years ago, when the terms like outsourcing meant sending everybody's job or just everyday working people's job overseas to countries like England, India, Bangladesh, and other places like that where the wages were cheaper. Now, automation has taken on everything and it's taken it to a point where human jobs 
now can be done by robots. And we need to understand where we are. Some of these jobs that you might not be thinking about will eventually be taken over by robotics. Think about this. Remember the movie years ago, RoboCop? The cop was so vicious, so violent, that he was just determined to police and rule and do the thing the way that he says does it. I want to draw your attention momentarily outside of the scriptures to a man by the name of Martin Ford. Martin Ford would have to be one of the world, or at least one of America's foremost or premier technology advocates, but yet he is the most, how can I word this? He is perhaps the most skittish of technology advocates because he understands the direction in which the technology is going. He has published several books, but I have highlighted four of his most prominent books because they all pretty much came around within a 15 year span, it's actually less than 15 years, but he was trying to make a point. In a book published in 2009 called The Lights in the Tunnel, he gives a graphic illustration of what it's like to drive through a tunnel with different types of lights in the tunnel, glaring, some bright, some dim, some brighter than others, some mid-range, what have you. And he painted this picture of it as if those are the people in the global developed countries of the world, capitalist societies, the working class, the wealthy, the middle, upper class, all of them, the billionaires being the brighter lights. And then the everyday working Joe Smoes or what have you being some of the lesser or dimmer lights. Then he goes on and talk about driving through the tunnel and getting to the outside of the tunnel where the lights are even far fewer in between and less bright which are now the people in developing countries that sometimes earn or live off of less than $10 per day. Can you imagine that? Some of you all spend more than $10 at a Starbucks getting a cup of coffee. So, and that's not to mock you. I'm just saying, let's be clear now. Hey, there's no Hebrew way to drink your coffee. Let's be clear on that. I, I know us a lot of times we'll take everything and run it to the farthest, most grossest, maxed out extreme. We have to learn to stop that so that the Ruach may be able to deal with us. We do have to calm down. I'm not dissing you all when I tell you calm down. I deal with people on a daily basis that are a lot of time are just in such a panic that you can't get nothing across to them if you try it. But yet they're in such a state of panic that they don't know no other way. So in 2009, he published the book Lights in the Tunnel that really was trying to get people to understand with the technology and advances in technology, it's going to shift the whole world economy in such a way that it's going to disrupt the lives of a lot of people who've never really thought it through. So he comes back and expounds a little further on the book in 2015. I remember reading the book because Baltimore went up in flames here in 2015 during the Freddie Gray riots. It made national and international news at that time frame as well. This book was also making profound international news. In fact, the book caught the attention in such ways that remember what I've taught you all about the Council on Foreign Relations. This is their house organ, Foreign Affairs magazine. In the same year that the book, The Rise of the Robots, emerged in 2015, so too did the rise in dialogue among the people around the world who are in the know. So Foreign Affairs did a series in here called Hi Robot, Work and Life in the Age of Automation. And the article was walking lockstep in hand with what Martin Ford was saying about robots rising to the forefront in such a way that humanity really wouldn't be able to catch on to see what was taking place. Now, by 2018, Martin Ford was able to expound a little further on the book and go into depth with a specific point by doing an analysis of 23 of the world's foremost technology experts on artificial intelligence, what it is, what it does, what it could do, deep think, and all this other stuff. It's you to, to really get into technology, you got to develop a whole new vocabulary because they have words to describe the stuff that they have. If you could go back in time, 50 years ago, and talk to some of your dead relatives and say terms to them like, log on, boot up, or things that they would have no idea, no clue what you and I were talking about. But with the advances in technology in every age, 
vocabularies change and words are added in to make meanings of things more valid and or realistic to people. So keep that in mind as the prophets were saying things in such a way that they didn't have words in their vocabulary in that day to describe the visions that Abba Yahweh allowed them to foresee. So then they sometimes had to use words and symbolisms and animals and different things to further convey the thoughts of what it was that they were seeing several thousand years ago that was actually allowing them to see into your day and mine now. That, brothers and sisters, is phenomenal. And we thank Yahweh that as his word says that we prophesy in part because we know in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part is done away with. So after a while, the mystery of some of these things now is removed because we now start to see it with clarity. Now, I know a lot of you all don't like person to teach you with nothing other than the scripture. But I will say again, and I'm going to stand firm on this point. You will have to step out of the scriptures without discarding the scripture. You will have to step out of the scripture. If you don't do no more than put the Torah down for a minute to look around in the earth to see the things that scripture is talking about as it unfolds. Because if your scriptural vocabulary does not increase, then your vision in the Torah of Yahweh and in the things that are unfolding, then your vision too is blurred and or limited. So we have to do what the prophet did. He said, I will stand upon my watch and see what the answer of Yahweh will be. I pray before I present this stuff to anybody because a lot of times I do not understand it. And there have been times where I've said this and I'm not saying it's like I'm crying out for everybody to call me and I talk to you a cry on your shoulder. I'm not under that type of panic or duress. Let's be clear of that. When I say sometimes I don't have nobody to further my own analysis of this stuff with, I mean simply sometimes I've read into it or saw so deep or y'all was revealed this so deeply. If I don't sit somebody down and teach them what I've seen, picked up and or understood, then I won't be able to articulate it to get it across because sometimes technologies and things are moving so fast at a pace that out that at a level that outpaces our understanding of these things, which is why scripture gives us that nudge or that reminder, lean not upon thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. I remember years ago, well over 30 years ago, praying for understanding for this. And I really remember when Abba Yahweh started granting it unto me. When I started teaching this to a lot of people, who would have ever thought and this is just for people that are close to me that know I ain't lying or making this up. Who would have ever thought that the day would come when I couldn't get on an airplane or buy a plane ticket and I ain't blowed up nobody. I ain't hurt nobody but name on the government watch list. And then government watch list and agencies will verify, yeah, yeah, you on there. So what? We watch everybody that's either a known terrorist or what an associated terrorist group or organization. So this is the type of stuff that happens. And you all will need to understand this. There are these names of these so-called international terrorists. I don't know how many times I've seen in the news where the United States government done killed Zachariah Zarqawi or Zasahawi or all this other stuff. Sometimes the same old name just keep getting recycled. Didn't they blow somebody up in Afghanistan this week? But about a year or so ago, didn't they blow somebody up somewhere else with the same exact name? See, whenever America's getting embarrassed on the world stage or something ain't happen, they always go dig up terrorists that they killed 40, 50 years ago, dig them up, kill them again. Because the people are so stupid, not that you are stupid, but I'm saying they think in their mind's eye, they think the people are so stupid, ain't nobody going to know. There are these news reports based on technology called deep fakes, artificial intelligence, where you can take so much back footage of an individual and work that thing in and do headshots and uh, what do you call it? Photoshopping. And in a way, you ain't never seen a picture of a certain person naked or this person or that person naked, but you can work it out so well that proportionate with the picture, the head size, whatever, you put their naked head, their head on the naked body, had them saying and doing stuff that they didn't even do, what they now call deep fakes. You cannot do this stuff without advances in artificial technology, which means you. The people of Yahweh are going to have to know and understand this stuff because this is how it's going down now. When I say to you 
that technology will drive the great tribulation. It's time to get up off of those old visions of the great tribulation where you running and howling and they're chasing you with water hoses and German shepherds. Now you are beyond that. Now they are doing things and doing things in ways that if you are caught sleeping on them and growling and slumbering, you may never get up when it's time to get up and get in motion. So believe me when I say something's on the move. So in the book, Architects of Intelligence in 2018, he interviews 23 of the world's top artificial intelligence experts and talks to them about their plans, what the future holds, where they're getting the sources from and the funding for all of this stuff and what they intend for this stuff to do and how their minds are functioning. By 2021, he goes beyond lights in the tunnel. He now understands the rise of the robots. He's looking at the architects of intelligence or the builders of the artificial intelligence to the rule of the robots. Did you hear what I just said? To the rule of the robots. And knowing all this, these people network together so that here we have James Barrett in his book, Our Final Invention of 2013. Telling people about artificial intelligence and the end of the human era. What in the world do you think they mean when they tell you the end of the human era? They talking about doing away with you. Let's be clear. You can't rebel against almighty Yahweh and find love in the arms of the devil. It just ain't going to work like that. The devil don't love nobody. So, our final invention is a rough draft estimate of what all of this stuff is going to do. And basically, he sounded the alarm saying, look, we thought ourselves to be so smart that, look, this is probably the last thing that we will ever invent because we are making it so smart that it can make itself. That it can defend itself. And that Will Smith was in the movie. This was before he smacked Chris Rock. So let's be clear. He smacked Chris Rock after the iRobot thing. They get here with the high robot. So if the high robot in iRobot didn't want to die, didn't want to be unplugged because it thought it too had the power of life, you better start coming to understand exactly what's going on in robotics because the military is sitting up bragging on some of the things that they got and the capabilities and the technology of what they ought to do. In teaching the class, I had to give them a quick assignment to get them off my back for just 10 minutes while I finished reading an article in National Defense Magazine. See, look at me, y'all. Look at my little face. Forgive me for being so stupid. I read stuff like this. I guess just reading stuff like this is enough to get me flagged. Because, see, I ain't hurt nobody. I ain't shot, killed nobody. I ain't bombed nobody from the air. I, in fact, I ain't even throwed eggs at nobody in my lifetime. You know, I don't, I don't have experience of egging. Uh, 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 come on, y'all. But when we strive for the truth in Yahweh, this is what they do. So I had to get my students a few minutes to back up off me because what I read just prior to class starting sort of startled me. But what they were talking about on page 10, again, let me hold it up. National Defense Magazine. This is uh, July 2022. You may find it. You may not in your bookstores near you, whatever the case may be. Eh, anyway, page 10. You, you got to hear this now. They, they laying it out. Military use of unmanned, autonomous, or robotic devices is only increasing as technology evolves and allows people to step back from danger while machines do the work. This is the rise of the RoboCop. This is the militarization of the police. This is the robotization of the police and the military. One company has announced a technology that will give robots another edge. The sense of touch. People say, oh, well, we already got that, Elder. What are you talking about? You know how y'all do me sometimes. Some of y'all smart talk me because you think I don't know what I'm talking about. That's all right. I, I understand. Anyway. In 2022, the people that know this, maybe they don't know what you know, but they put this in the article. Bebop sensors. Now, check that out. It's the Bebop thing. Check, check it out. Now, pay attention, y'all. This, this is cool. Bebop sensors, which manufactures intelligent fabrics and haptic gloves, has developed RoboSkin, a flexible fabric loaded with sensors that mimic human touch when applied to a robotic fingertip. Isn't that deep? Each fingertip has 80 sensors that can measure pressure, 
from 5 grams to 50 kilograms. The technology essentially creates a nervous system and enables robots to perform with greater dexterity and autonomy, according to a promotional video. If we expect robots to work with us, they need to fit through our doors and use our tools, and sensing the environment as people do is therefore essential. RoboSkin, which is less than one millimeter thick, starts with a polyester or nylon non-woven fabric, which is then treated so the outside of each fiber is conductive. And then as the fiber is distributed, I'm sorry, yeah, is disturbed, e either by pressure, shear, bend, it's electrical characteristics change because those fibers have a different relationship to each other. And then we pull signals off of the fiber. Then we can process them and produce very detailed and accurate data. So they're trying to give the robots the sense of touch now. So if they kick the door in and raid the house, they, they, look, here, here's an interesting one. They kick a door in and raid a house. Now they're sending in robots. Remember when the brother got mad with the police, kept shooting black people, and he shot them 11 police down in Jack, Texas, and I think five or six died. They didn't go in and approach him because he was military trained like them. So they knew they didn't stand a chance. What did they do? Sent in a robot and the robot dropped the bomb in the room and blew the man to smithereens. Pay attention, Yisrael. That ain't the first time. They did that to commandment keepers. Say what you want about that little white man in Waco, Texas by the name of David Koresh. Say what you will or may about them. Anybody calling on the name of Yahweh at the appointed time is going to be counted as suspect. And I look, don't do it, okay? I know some of y'all. Some of y'all hate the name of Yahweh. So then that triggers an argument with you. You got the his name is not Yahweh, it's Yahweh, it's Yahuwah, it's a look. You ain't got the understanding of a newborn baby fresh out of a pamper. So calm down. OK, without the proper level of information or dialogue, your argument about how you pronounce the name of Yahweh becomes irrelevant. It is about people striving for salvation that Shaitan does not want to see hit the goal and make it into salvation. The devil wants to destroy everything. You're going to have to understand that. OK, let's be clear on that. Now, remember, Martin Ford put out four books between 2009 and 2021, essentially warning the world, hey y'all, this thing is coming down in a way where we really haven't anticipated. Martin, uh, 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 what's his name here? James Barrett said, look, this we done messed up so bad, this is gonna be our last invention because this thing is gonna destroy us. Technology will be used to drive the great tribulation. You'll probably need more sermons and or messages about this. We are sitting up as Yisrael, so righteous, so technical, so whatever the case. Give me a good five seconds. There might have been seven, but nevertheless. You got to see the direction in which everything is going. The devil, being wiser than Daniel, has left no stone unturned. Look at this cover real close. Technically food. Inside Silicon Valley's mission to change what we eat. See, this is what the wealthy do. They get money, and as Damon Wayans did it, more money, more money, more money, and get more and more oppressive. This is just some people, wealth and riches of the world just magnetizes itself to them. But Yahweh's word says, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of Yahweh. So we ain't worrying about wealth and riches and dynamics of all that right now. We are all sincerely striving together. I ain't caring about your skin color or anything, as long as you ain't rolling with the ones that hate everybody. Let's be clear on that. People get sensitive when I talk about white people. But there are white people on our channel that know, well, he's not talking about us. We're striving. We're trying to keep the commandment. But he is focused in exclusively on that ruling element. And anybody that's buying into their ideology arbitrarily, listen, Yisrael, we're going to have to drop some of our own dialogue and some of our own thinking. You can't be Israel and be democratic, too. You can't be Israel and be socialist, too. You can't be democratic and be anarchist and all that other stuff. Strive to simply serve Yahweh. Be the Torah keepers that Yahweh is looking for. Ain't nobody getting away. I've seen a lot of Hebrews. They promote this vegetarianism diet and all this other stuff from 
tofu to your food to my food and all this other stuff. Listen, y'all, there's no stone left unturned. We're going to have to pray. And we're going to have to pray hard. And in the process of praying hard, you will have to pray hard and calm down knowing, hey, wait a minute. I know he's going to come for me. I know though the way may get rough and weary. My little grandson had a little problem the day earlier day, and he broke him down a little bit and it made him cry. And I said, come here, talk to me. You and I roll like that. You can talk to me. I said, what's the problem? And he was getting ready to whisper something in my ear. But before he could start talking, I said, repeat after me. And I started reciting the 23rd Psalm to him. Not one or two verses. I recited the whole thing and I made him repeat after me. And he got to that point and said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. I broke it all down. I thank Yahweh. That we had elder fathers and mothers that would teach us these things. Because, see, you got to get this across to your children. Yisrael got to learn how to really take the word of Yahweh and ease this in no matter how you get it across without fanaticism and all this other stuff. Because, see, it ain't about making the world see you and recognize you and acknowledge you. That ain't what it's about. It's about doing this thing the way that Yahweh said do it so that he recognizes you and says, that's my child. That one there is striving. Now. Let's break the monotony of self-imposed righteousness and let me make something perfectly clear to you. Strive. You're going to have it rough in this lifetime. Every day ain't going to be flowered beds of ease. Every day you ain't going to be walking on rose petals. Some of them days you're going to take a step and your foot going to hit some of them thorns of life. And as you, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, that other foot going to hit some of them thorns. And as you, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, and lose your footing, you're going to fall in them thorns face first or on your back or on your butt tie. Some of those things are going to befall all of us. We still have to maintain the integrity of the Torah and know that Yahweh is with us. You must understand this. So if by chance some of us die, a violent death or bloody death. That does not mean that Abba Yahweh has rejected you. That simply means that that is the death that he chose for you or I as his servant to go. Go out knowing that he is not a liar. That he guarantees salvation of all those that love and simply obey him. We're going to have to get to that point, Israel, because it's coming now. And in the few short years and months we got left, as the things are rolling around, start bracing yourself. If they don't hit you an hour with power outages and different things like that this summer, and they get somebody else in the summer, these trials and tribulations by the hand of Shaitan and these evil spirits, don't get you this summer to get you late in the winter. Don't get you in the winter to hit you in the spring. Don't get you in the spring and to get you in the roll back around of the next season, the fall cycle, whatever the case may be. We are going to go through something in order to make it through. You got to go through something in order to get through something. And when you get through something, you are expecting something. And the only something you are expecting is the gift of eternal life. Shaitan cannot take that out of Yahshua's hand. So we're going to have to stand down and watch this. Let's get into this. Remember now, real quick, Jeremiah chapter 30 lays out something that we just going to have to understand without being so fearful and broken hearted. Be ready <clears throat> and willing. If that's what it takes, don't go around asking for it. But I said, be ready and willing to die for righteousness sake. If that's what it takes, be ready and willing. I just read in Mark where Yahshua said, if you lose your life, my name's sake, you'll find it again. So stop worrying about the tax man. Stop worrying about the gas man. Stop worrying about the boss and all these other people. We serve almighty Yahweh and we do what we want. Did you hear what I said? That don't mean we do what we want to do. We do what we want. And we want to obey Yahweh. Am I correct in that? And if you agree with me, just type out a simple hallelujah on the channel at this precise moment, 825. Listen, I said I'm going to try to keep this under now. I already can admit right now I ain't going to make it. So bear with me if I go over. Y'all all right? All right, let's do this. Jeremiah 30. I said we do what we want. We want to obey Yahweh. Hallelujah. That's what I mean. We do what we want. We ain't like the heathen do whatever they want. There's a penalty for that. We do what we want, and we want to obey Yahweh. Scripture said, blessed are all they that do his commandment. We do that. We want to do his commandment, so I do what I want. 
and I want to do his command. Let me be perfectly clear on that. And I know you all at home better repeat that thing to yourselves daily. Okay. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 30. These are the words that Yahweh spoke concerning Israel and concerning Yahuda. Jeremiah 30 verse 4. Thus saith Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. For which cause do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness. Paleness meaning they don't know what to do. Just uh, no, no, they're not flush in the face with knowledge and understanding of y'all. Just don't know what to do. Listen, quick question. Where are the men today that's going to jail for the name? Where are the men today that go to jail for preaching the truth? Where are they? Now, I ain't saying people ain't out in the earth that just stand for the truth, but I'm just telling you all. Right now, we go to jail for some of the stupidest stuff. That's not mocking us or anything of that nature. Just listen, there's a brother here in Baltimore. He made the news today, uh, Tyree Moorhead. Now, Tyree Moorhead, grown man, old like me, what have you. Now he claimed he's changed and turned his life around or what have you. <clears throat> Telling people he used to be an assassin, all this other stuff, right? So now he goes around the city and he paints these no-shoot zones all over the city. You know, was trying to stop gun violence and everything. But... He operates under the nickname Tyree Corleone. Now, anybody know anything about Corleone? You, you, you're taking the name of a, a, of a fictional movie character, uh, Italian mafia figures and all this other stuff. See, when we change from bad to good and we come to Yahweh, we can leave everything else behind because we count it as dung. We don't want to keep clinging to the old way to show people that we're still tough. If we look soft or weak, then we just look soft or weak. We are not the old man that we used to be, but we are a new creature in Abba Yahweh. So Tyree got shot today. Say he got hit three times, but he got wind of the police being there, uh, wanting to raid his house, go in there and check out some stuff or whatever the case may be. Here is my point. When we turn around and we're really living and or seeking the truth, we want to be so right with Yahweh that the change is noticeable to any and everyone that has ever known us. The change in the Apostle Shaul, after a while, the way he kept laboring in the world, people knew that the change was legitimate. OK, is that not what they knew? It was a man Yahweh sent to go anoint him. He talked with Yahweh said, wait a minute now, this man did this, that, and other to Yahweh's people. You want me to anoint him? Yahweh said, go anoint him. Do what I tell you to do, for he is a chosen vessel. From that point forward, the man changed. Shaul, how the Gentiles changed his name from Shaul to Paul is, uh, look, that, that's another day, another time, another story. They always got to change our names. We need to seek the Sadiqa of Yahweh, the righteousness of Yahweh. He going to give us a new name at that day. But now pay attention to this verse because this verse weaves technology in in a way where we might not be understanding what's being said here. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. Now pause for a minute because in Matthew 24, I believe 21 or 22, somewhere in one of them two verses, uh, he talks about a day of a time of trouble such as was not since there was a nation, even to this same time. So what's so special about those latter days that it's a time of trouble? Unprecedented, so much so like nothing that has ever been in the face of this earth. And given the fact that technology is ever changing and ever advancing, the question you gotta ask yourself in this age is, is technology producing a more righteous generation? Is technology producing a more fair and just and equitable society? Is technology capable of doing that? With technology today, you can broadcast the Kodesh truth. You can broadcast the truth of Yahweh's name. Some idiot on the other end of technology can dislike what you say, disapprove it, and remove truth. So all technology, don't let people keep on telling you, well, the technology is not evil. It's the way the man applies it. Get out of here with that crap. Some of this technology is sheer evil. It was made for evil. The nuclear bomb is a piece of technology. Let me say it real slow. The nuclear bomb is a piece of technology. It has no realistic, purposeful, peaceful purpose on the planet. It, it, now, don't tell me, well, nuclear bombs do bring peace because people are scared to have that dropped on them. Well, look, some of us... Come to our senses, and we're scared to have the Torah dropped on us. But 
it wasn't made to hurt us. So unless we come to understand, and I, I talk to us this way because I talk with a lot of us, no offense to you all, but I talk with a lot of us Hebrews now. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes we take what scripture says a little too far over the edge. Y'all sure say, except you become as a little child, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now that don't mean be childish in all this stuff you do. 50 year old men still going out, spazzing out, having fits and attacks like babies. I had a man curse me out last Friday for no reason. An event I ain't had nothing to do with. Just cursed at me, went all off. I stayed calm. I ain't really paying no mind, but I knew that, okay, whatever amount of points you think you had, now you ain't got no points. And I said in my mind's eye, I, I, I'll see you Monday when you come to work sober. So lo and behold, I did see him. First thing he did was, hey, man, still impudent. I want to apologize for what I said Friday. So I said, okay, I, I understand that, but let me give you some good advice. Do not apologize for being who and what you are. He says to me, okay, 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 all right, all right, I got that. I'll take that, even though that's offensive. Even though it's offensive, I'll take that. I'm trying to figure out to this day what's offensive about it. Because, see, they say that a drunken man's mouth is a sober man's mind. So being drunk or high or whatever, those evil spirits allowed him to speak what was really from the depth of his heart. Now, that was a lesson for me. I ain't get mad and want to fight and whoop him and all this other stuff. I, look, look, no bragging, no boast. I can take care of myself. I told y'all he has given me that ability. I can take care of myself and I can look at him and see, nah, that ain't even worth it. If you jump on me, I, I, I'm going home and eat dinner. I can do it. But my point being, I cut him loose. I let it be known in a way that, well, you lost points with me on that one. I can forgive you all day. But forgiveness don't necessarily mean that we're going to walk lockstep as brethren and all this other stuff. Some people, you got to keep them at bay. Give them their space. Give them distance. That does not mean you hate them. People always think that when you set the record straight, you're not setting the record straight in love. We don't know how to function. Technology today has allowed people to function in such a way. Here's the funniest thing. You have a dispute or argument, disagreement with people right now. They ain't going to be true to you, but technology will let you know how they feel about you. I'll tell you how you find this out. You have a dispute with anybody, whether right or wrong, go and check Facebook the next day to find out how they really feel about you. You understand what I'm saying? Technology will let the truth come out. They'll post something about you. You know, hey, We got a brother on channel. He do it all the time. I, I, look, I fixed him. Though. I set him up. I didn't block him. But I muted him in such a way where I don't even see your stuff come up in my news feed. Because I know whatever I preach on Shabbat, he going to get up on the channel. If he disagree with it, he going to throw it up on his Facebook page. And then ironically, it comes up in my news feed where I know, okay, I just preached that. So now you're against that, but you call yourself throwing slurs. Well, the slurs or the spirit behind it won't hurt us if we're not within proximity of it. Y'all understand? So I don't see it, so now it doesn't bother me. Same way when letters and emails come that are offensive and things of that nature, Abba Yahweh has shielded me from it because, see, now you really don't have to delve into that and be impacted by the negative spirit or the connotations behind it. What you and I are going to have to understand is that these connotations that are coming with technology are coming in such a way where it really seeks to destroy you, Israel. So you got to stop arguing and bickering among yourself and know the devil coming at you from every conceivable angle. Technically food. Inside Silicon Valley's mission to change what we eat. You got to hear what they say. I ain't going to read or review the book for you. Some of this stuff, if you all go buy it, you buy it. If you don't, I would honestly say to you, don't waste the money. I'm giving you a passing analysis of it. Listen to this. Eating the veggie burger used to mean consuming a mushy, flavorless patty that you would never confuse with beef. But now companies like Beyond Meat, Impossible meat. I guess that's like the Impossible Whopper. Anyway, Impossible Foods and Eat Just dominate the media. That's a food company, by the way. Eat Just. Imagine that. Eat Just. So I'm going to eat just by you lying to me about what I'm eating. See, this is what get me with a lot of our vegetarian brothers and sisters. You don't eat no meat. You're eating off vegetables, all the stuff you say you are, but you go get your vegetables or your food and all this other stuff, and you want it shaped like a hamburger or a patty or some other stuff without realizing to yourself, subconsciously you desire the meat. Then the permissible meats that Abba Yahweh granted you, while you still have time, you might as well just eat it. It is Yahweh's law, and it is permissible. It ain't technically food. It's permissible food. See, we get duped into thinking that we're smarter than Yahweh. 
So whoever came up with this stuff forgot to tell us. I saw it in the 70s and 80s when it really started rising among sacred name users. I saw in the 70s and 80s and going on into the 90s, a lot of us that were Hebrews trying to eat that way and the tofu burgers and all this other different stuff, crackle patties or whatever you want to call them, were dying from high levels of cancer. Now, nobody wants to go back and talk about that or put that type of research together, but it was happening. And I know what some of y'all say, well, you're dying from cancer if you eat the fruit. You're dying from cancer if you eat the meat. Dying. Well, pray to Yahweh like you ought to. He says to us through Yahshua that time is coming where if we eat or drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm us. So who are you going to trust, Yahweh or Silicon Valley? We got to really think what we do through. So it says... The media and refrigerated sections of our grocery store, let me skip that part. With the help of scientists working in futuristic labs making milk without cows, imagine that, milk without cows and eggs without chickens, startups are creating convincing facsimiles and even wholly new food categories. I remember when I was a child, Tang came out. Tang was the instant orange drink for the uh, astronauts. So that was the selling point in 72 or whenever it was that they first invented Tang. That was the selling point. Hey, man, if they drinking it in outer space, you can drink it on the earth. And everybody wanted Tang. Came out bright orange. They got real slick with it. They made it great. Now, I, it probably got 47 flavors. Now, ain't no telling. Got gravy flavor, Tang. Hey, you know, ain't, ain't no telling. Mashed potato flavor. I, don't put nothing past them, okay? In fact, I'm going to look it up later. You, you'd be surprised what they got. De right, Deacon? Anyway, we're going we're gonna to deal with it. Startups are creating convincing facsimiles and even new food categories. These foods are cheered by consumers and investors because many are plant-based, often vegan, and help address societal issues like climate change. Animal rights. Why don't you address the real societal issue about climate change? Who messed the climate up? Yahweh solved the climate change riddle in uh, Revelation 11, 18. Yahweh said, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to destroy those that destroy the earth. So y'all get on out there with your protest signs and pick it in and, and, and back them up, support them if you want to. Y'all would say he's going to give reward to his servants, to his saints, to the prophets, and all of them that fear his name and shall destroy them that destroy the earth. So I'm rolling with Yahweh on that. I, I'm in agreement with him. Yahweh, get him. Anyway. So often like climate change, animal rights, and our planet's dwindling natural resources. But too, pardon me, but too often, they are ultra-processed and secretly produced. What are our personal health? What about it? What do we give up by embracing a technology-driven food supply? You already know you ain't eating nothing real. See the woman on the news a few months back created a, a, a burger out of air. She took something that looked like a Bunsen burner and a torch and took a petri dish and kept burning it and doing something and cooking it and spinning it around and nothing was on the petri dish. She kept the flame going and doing something. It was creating a food out of air. I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life. And when she got done, they did it on the news for about a good 35, 40 seconds. When she got done with it and put it down, took this little spatula and flipped it over, it looked just like a hamburger. So this is the type of stuff we're up against. Right now, the Hebrews are arguing over the dietary law. Which baffles me. How do we get to arguing over that which thus saith Yahweh? If he said it and it's in your book, then it should be in my book. How do we get to arguing over what's in the book? Now, we got a problem solver in the event we do can't, in the event we can't come to an agreement. We have a problem solver. It is called the Ruach HaKodesh. We pray to be guided, but not act like you got. See, see, this is what people do to me, Deacon. Everybody, they talk to me, they always tell me what the Spirit told them to say to me. Everybody do that. Hey, say, shalom, bro. How you doing? Yeah, look, Spirit told me to call you and tell you about this article in the this and the that and the other. So, uh, you know, you don't want to be too facetious or disrespectful to people. But you're thinking things like, what, the Spirit didn't have no minutes on the phone to call me to tell me the same thing that you called me and tell me? Uh, anyway. I've learned over the years, be careful what you say to people because we're all sensitive in this era of time now. Look, look I'm going to teach y'all the secret of sensitivity. Get over yourself. People are going to say stuff to you sometimes. It's going to hurt your feeling, whatever. This is the secret of sensitivity. Get over yourself. And occasionally or from time to time, you got to ignore people. 
Some people you got to ignore them just to keep your sanity. Some people you just going to have to let them go. They say something dumb. Okay, there's this look you can give them. When people say something that's really dumb, you know it's dumb. And after they come out their mouth, they know it's dumb. There's this look you can give them. You got to give them the look. Let me teach y'all the look real quick. You give them the look. You just say. The look. They'll realize, okay, that was stupid. I shouldn't have said that. I should have rethought that. <laughs> Better a slip of the pavement than a slip of the tongue. Let's be clear on that. Now, investigative reporter Larissa Zim Zimberkoffin, whatever. See, a lot of these people, I don't even care if I don't get their names right because the way they live is just so disrespectful. This is interesting for her. I ain't concerned about getting her name right because she goes on a tizzy in here about population control and all this other stuff. And when I start reading books by people that's all for population control, y'all always say be fruitful and multiply. This is his earth. So obviously he didn't mind us being here if he said be fruitful and multiply, not a fruit loop. See, a lot of people date the Fruit Loops doing things where they cannot multiply and then they want to be respected, okay? Anyway. So, I ain't pressed. Zimbacar pokes holes in the mania-driven driving today's changing food landscape and demystifies these mysterious foods. Readers will learn about the manufacturing systems and the monocrops behind the flashy technology, the origins of hot new proteins like pea, mung bean, and canola, and the problems with entrusting Venture capitalists and Wall Street with our very livelihood. Though news breaking revelations and others, the conversations with leading industry voices, technically, food examines the trade offs of replacing real food with technology driven approximations and shines a bright light on the rapid changes coming to our supermarket. So, see, remember they started genetically modifying foods and some of the stuff, and they kept saying, well, we ain't really got to tell you that we modified it. We don't have to say anything. We could just do this, that, and the other. Listen, Revelations 13, 11. Pay attention to this because, see, technological developments are so intricately connected to the beast and his emergence that it will disrupt the way of life of everyone or everyone else one way or another. Everyone serving Yahweh as well as everyone on the planet. It's going to disrupt the way you live in one way or another. Give it a few more short years. You know, you can't make certain statements. You can say, man, this thing about to get worse. People will always top your statement by saying, it's already worse. Well, no. If the worst is yet to come, those that are alive when the worst that is yet to come hits, I don't know what else they would be able to say that the worst is yet to come. The only other thing left to come would be Yahshua. I ain't got to sit here and guess, but I can tell you with all the surety. This earth. And the rate they going, the direction Yahweh's word is talking about them and all the stuff they intend to do. They ain't got another hundred years to run and get crazy. Now, don't you all get up and go, woohoo, all right. So that means now, uh, let's see, I'm 40 now. If I live to be 100, I can cut up, and he probably won't come back between now and the time I die. I'm going I'm to sow my wallow. No, 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 no. Calm your butt down. Get right with Almighty Yahweh. Get right now. Because he has given each of us a lifetime to get ourselves together. It matters not when you came to Yahweh or when you were awakened. Know for certain that if you call yourself one of his children, then you were obviously one of his children from the foundation of the world. Meaning he intended to awaken you. He also intended for you to obey him. Therefore, if you are awakened at 80 and start striving to serve him, and you think you got another 20 years, take that whole 20 and wholly serve Almighty Yahweh. Don't be no egghead. Don't be no fruit loop. Don't be no nutcase. Serve him with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you may lay down and get back up again and see his face in the greatness of his shalom. That is what you want to do. All this stuff now, I hear all with white folks over racism, white supremacy and all that. I teach on it as an issue because it is so invasive and so evasive and so pervasive that it's all over the planet. And I teach it because you're going to need to understand what Yahweh's word says about racism from Yahweh's perspective. Don't let nobody come to you tell you, well, the Bible does not teach color. Shut your mouth. 
I work with a little old man, little German fella. He had another man on the job. He couldn't stand the way that man just talked all day long. He says to me, David, pay him no mind. He's got a lot of mouth. And I just like to hear him fuss about the man. Said he's got a lot of mouth. So I'm saying it to you all. Don't have so much mouth. Calm down. Wait on y'all. Stop acting like you got it. You know you got it. You just so holy. Stop that. Yahweh made you holy enough. You got all the holes that you need to do all the things that he commanded that body to do. That's holy enough. Don't go beyond that or you will get yourselves in trouble. Am I clear? We really want to just simply serve Yahweh. When we calm down and look at his word deeply, it makes a joyful noise in our life. You can rejoice and shout hallelujah in the quietest of settings and nobody never know what you just did because you have that everlasting joy upon your head. So yeah, everything ain't for everybody. Yahweh does not intend to save the whole world. That's another thing. Don't let nobody tell you he's going to save everybody. He did not say that. He would have never invented hell if he wasn't going to save the world. If he was going to save everybody, pardon me. If he was going to save everybody, hell would not exist. Gehenna would not exist. The burning flames, the lake of fire would not exist. So he obviously, with his infinite love and mercy that endures forever, he obviously does not intend to save everybody. And some people have done some things where they are not worthy of salvation. And Yahweh knows that. It's us that don't know it. Listen to this now. Revelations 13, beginning right there, verse 11. You got to understand the technology in this. It says, And behold, another beast coming up out of, the north, out of the earth. And he had two horns like a dragon, and he spoke. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So now he come real smooth, talk real smooth to you. Remember that little man came on the TV that time tell people, Take the jab. Take the jab. Well, he got jabbed twice. Got double vaxxed twice and still got sick with it. So they're saying it's a it's a pandemic of the unvaxxed. How is it that if that's the case, they started it from the beginning of the world? That's a lie. Now you got it and still got it. If you get what I'm saying, I, he got it and still got it. I hope y'all got what I just said. Hey, don't make me go back over that again. It gets more confusing by the tongue anyway. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Some of this stuff is so historically intense, you need a whole Shabbat or more to really teach on it and to get this point across. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Well, stop for a minute. Because there are people that are up there building stuff, putting technology together, building space stations and other stuff, big as a shopping mall, putting this stuff up there. You catch them on the right night when they light up the space station, you think it's a star. But the brightest thing that you see up there sometimes, it ain't no star. It is the International Space Station. So when they light that thing up, you can see it from down here on Earth. So now they all up there with their technology. They admit that they got laser technology. They admit that they got all the deeper super stuff in there. They admit, they admit they got nuclear weaponry and other stuff. Can firepower this stuff. Who are they planning to fight if, if ain't nobody in outer space? See, sometimes we ain't thinking. We know Yahshua's coming. We know they will do anything. They will risk it all to stop him. As dumb as it may sound, don't y'all play them cheap. They really do intend to stop him. Yeah, anyway. So now you got power to put your weapons in outer space. And if you need to, you stand there in communication with NASA, Department of Defense, uh, the, uh, the Five Eyes, and all this other stuff that they have around here in the world. If you don't know what those terms mean, don't worry about it. Explain it another day, another time. But anyway, you got connections with them so that at the time you raised your hand and called for fire to come down out of earth trying to emulate what Elijah did. Come on. It is not in this age impossible. You just got to be reading this stuff. OK, you have to be paying attention to them. Now, <clears throat> he deceived them, verse 14, that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth. Question. Are you on earth? Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, some want to make this thing come forward and monitor people. 
I was talking to young men on the job this morning. Some people you just grab having a, you you just grow a bond with them because though they may not know Yahweh, they thinking in ways where you pray that Yahweh touch them and wake them up. I work with a young brother on the job, and he always talk about stuff like that. He said, "Man, ain't no way you convince me that some of these people walking around on this earth ain't robots." Now I'm thinking to myself for a minute, it scared me. Because I'm thinking, what would make him start a conversation about robots at 7.15 in the morning? But what made him really start it, I didn't pay attention. He was talking to me at the truck, and he saw this article on the cup on, on the front seat. This is uh, The Economist magazine. Let me give you the date real quick. June 11th through 17, 2022. Artificial intelligence, new frontier. The new frontier now is the human mind, where they want to put artificial into neural networks in the brain. You ain't took karate a day in your life, but they put the chips in your head, and now they can download a whole martial arts program. Next thing you know, you're international Jackie Chan, and you from Philly or Baltimore or somewhere else. Anyway, so they break it down, talking about the technology and the terabytes, making this thing with... The, the, the language of it is just so complex. I forget what they call it. But anyway, it can do like a trillion tabulations or calculations per second. Well, if it ain't a trillion people on the earth, I had a man tell me years ago that there's no way you can set a system up that can keep track of everybody on the earth. Well, everybody that is on the known earth and is involved and want to participate in these global systems, the way it's going down, they do intend on marking and tagging everybody. So if they're making little bitty computers to stick in buildings somewhere that ain't much bigger than this book bag, but yet it's a computer system now. This little carry-all bag, but you got a computer system this big that can do a trillion calculations per second. What do you think happened if they make making hundreds and thousands of them and put them out as a global neural network and it can keep track of everything and everybody, which means it can track your cell phone, my cell phone, and hundreds of thousands of other cell phones simultaneously. It can track banking transactions. It can watch uh, driver's license information pulled down in a routine traffic stop. It can search medical records. It can do all this stuff. I don't know where we get off saying that it cannot happen. We say that when we are ignorant of the information that is readily available in this society and when we are void of the Ruach HaKodesh. Other than that, don't get caught saying that the devil can't do it. He is trying. And I'll say again, if the man of Yahweh had the wisdom of Yahweh gave him to stand there with the first world's empire and give counsel to that man that was the first. And that was great wisdom that caused him to not lose his life and save the lives of his fellow Hebrew brothers because of their steadfastness in Yahweh. And here come the devil, having been in heaven. As the scriptures say, wiser than Daniel, and you're going to underestimate it, play it cheap. I say the Ruach really ain't talking to you. You got to be quiet now and get on the ball and search this stuff out because they're marching towards a goal and an objective. And no amount of marching and protesting that you and I do is going to stop it. It's coming. It is inevitable. And it is for Yahweh's people to pull themselves together and get ready because this is the way it's going. See, Little Christian preachers, you got to get people like, not, not that I put a lot of stock in them, people like Mark Hitchcock, uh, 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 Leonard Jeffries, and others. That little Christian men, sometimes they know the name of Yahweh, slide it in, know Yahshua, and sometimes they won't. They still, for whatever reason, are stuck in their mindset, and they want to hold on to Jesus. But here are books like Global Reset. Do current events point to the anti-Messiah and his world power empire? Now, now, for you at home, check out what I just did. You should be automatically in line with the word so that when you see these words, you don't falsely repeat them. Even though it plainly says on the book, Antichrist, you as a Hebrew know that Yahshua is not a Christ. The Antichrist should be you and me. If we're going to use the term, let's use it. I'm the Antichrist because I am against Christ because I know Yahshua is not a Christ. He's not Christos, none of that. He is Hamashiach. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one. So you will have to supplant the false language and false doctrine with the truth. So get yourselves in the mindset where instantly, as you see those false words, you run right over them with the truth. Okay? Practice that and pray to that effect. I repeat it again. He said in Hosea chapter 2, For I will take away the names of Balaam out of your mouth. Y'all would admit it. He'll take them out. You pray to y'all remove all those pagan terms that I may call upon your name and that we all may call upon you with one consent. Ask him. He will do it. Are we clear on that?
All right, Yisrael, listen to what he says now. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And as I said before, they, Martin Ford talked with them. And they were talking about how they got the technology. They got this stuff so hooked up now that it's learning from your emails. It's learning from text and chats and all this stuff. You can log on. I have a, a, a laptop. I tried to log into it this morning to do some things, get some work done. And I didn't have a proper passcode. So it locked me out of my own system. And it said... Prove that you are not a robot. I'm like, how the hell I po do that? Should I uh, go ahead and punch the screen right now? Maybe you'll figure out that I ain't a robot. Well, what do I do? So it gave me some alphabets and some letters to read and punch these back in. Well, what sense does that make when you taught the damn robot to read and it can punch the codes back in? So I want us to get an understanding of where we are in the world and see why we here, the little house of Israel, we don't play. We don't have time to be sitting around playing. We have to sound the alarm. We got to tell it as best we can, because if the devil with the power of all his electronics and all his devices and all these things, as Elder Vix often says, we are a prophetical people. They are a technological people. They can't get it through almighty Yahweh. They have to get it through Hashatan. You get it straight from Yahweh, and you can't afford to mess this thing up, okay? You cannot afford to do it. So we might as well get on Yahweh's side, get on his team right now, okay? This thing had power to give life unto the image of the beast. How did he have the power to do it if he didn't create the thing and then create the technology to keep the thing learning and ever learning? That's what deep learning is all about. They call it DL, not on the download now. DL for the computers ain't got nothing to do with homosexuality. It means deep learning. It's learning from you. It's learning from your learning and learning how to learn from watching your mistakes and your error. And you already got machines that beat some of the world's best chess players and all the stuff. You already got machines that's outthinking people, that's drawing things. You got driverless cars. These, these things run off of a GPS system. And, you know, heaven help you if your grandma just happened to step out in the street not thinking, but here's a driverless car that all of a sudden, Ain't expecting that two-legged speed bump to be in the way. We have to look at what we're dealing with because Hollywood, especially within the last 50 years, has protracted, I mean, projected all of that stuff out there to us. Remember, when we were little children. How many of y'all can remember uh, Lost in Space? And uh, 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 I forget the other one, but the little robot. Warning, Mr. Smith. Warning, warning. Warn the thing was sound the alarm. So if that was too far back for a lot of you all, I know some of you all come on forward. You all remember Star Wars with R2-D2 and C-3PO and all this other stuff. You know, come on. For those that are a little younger than that, still don't, I'm a little older than that, still can't remember, whatever. We come on up, we talk to you about RoboCop and all of this other stuff. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, what was the movie called? Uh, Terminator. So you have to understand, if they were able to throw it out there back then, let's not play them cheap. That simply means they had the technology. Some strange stuff happening in the world now. I'm telling you all, don't keep on playing with these people. Don't play them cheap because stuff is happening. And it's happening in ways where you get highly suspicious of stuff now. Hey, don't rule nothing out. Don't rule it out. Let's go further. And he causes all. Wait a minute. And that he should cause the beast to both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So now imagine robots with the technology. They're making the little four-legged dogs. Dog robots said how they're going to make it so the police ain't got the risk of dog's life or something in there now. So they'll retire all the German shepherds and put these robot dogs in there now, what have you. So I imagine the brother that was in Mr. Johnson's class that had a hard time getting a grasp of the rabbit dog. Ain't no way you get a grasp of the robot dog because that's what's happening. They got robots that can carry boxes of material, make them jump up over fences, get a spring of six foot jump over a fence and land right on its feet. Some are being taught and trained. Just go online and Google some of this stuff to get an idea of where the technology is coming. Because, see, when people don't keep buying the jab and they won't take the, all the stuff that's going on, when they won't go electronic, when they won't go casting and all the things, eventually it's going to get down to force. They want to force the entire world to accept this stuff. So you and I must understand that it will be technology to drive the persecution in the Great Tribulation. We need to understand that 
Get out of the construct of thinking we're going to all just be running and fleeing like uh, Harriet Tubman in the underground economy. They got technology today that will make chasing a group of people that are fleeing like we came up out of Egypt. They got technology now that'll make hunting you down real easy. So you need to look at some of this stuff now, okay? Then you got these old crazy right wing white boys and left wing and centrists. All of them that if they just oppose you, they all I put them all in the same basket. If they oppose Yahweh, Yahshua, what good can they have for me? Let's be clear now. A lot of them don't even want the name proclaimed and will rebuke you for teaching the truth and take uh, uh, teach the word of Christ. Do this, that, and other, man. Well, why don't you just Christ your butt on around the corner somewhere? Christ that. We're striving to serve Yahweh. You wouldn't want nobody calling your grandmama out of her name. And we don't want nobody calling out about out of his name or teaching us to not call upon his proper name. That's just where we are on earth right now. But hey, man, you ain't heard it from me because who am I, right? And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That's three aspects of a global technology that you better be paying attention to. Somebody that had the mark, what is the mark? Somebody that had the name of the beast, what is the name? You go along with it. Or the number of his name, what is it? We better start thinking. So now, Yahweh says that it is a day of trouble, but Yaakov shall be saved out of it. So says Jeremiah 30 and 7. So if it's a time of great trouble and he says you shall be saved out of it, we need to be looking at this thing a lot careful or, or more careful than what we are. I'm just telling you all. Let's go back for a second. Look at Revelation 6 verses 9 and 11 and see how it touches upon the fact that murder of the righteous will come down to being a full-fledged option under the reign of the beast. We, we don't think of stuff like this. Listen. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yahweh and for the testimony which they held. Pay attention to this. At the time Yahanan wrote this, guess what? It had not come to pass just yet. It had not come to pass. And it began to unfold in the Apostles' Day. And it has to double back and re-emerge and unfold in your day and mine. Come on, Yisrael. We don't have a lot of time to pull this thing together. We sitting around now debating some of the best of the shepherds that Yahweh sent for. We debate them, go after them, and challenge them or what have you. But we don't bother Joel Osteen. We don't bother grab your old dollar. We don't bother TD, whatever, man. I, look, man, come on. Poor little Israelite community. I know a brother right here in Baltimore. I kept telling him for years, man, leave that Alex Jones research material alone. That stuff ain't no good for you. You can't follow his research material and present the truth to your people because that's not the way y'all was going to allow it to play itself out. So now I saw on the news Alex Jones was in court. What was he in court for? the little families and the shootings and the killings in the school that he kept saying never happened and that the parents were crisis actors and all this other stuff, they sued him. And they busted him down. Broke everything down. Remember now, when Obama became president, they was all mad, talking about leaving and getting up out of the country and all this other stuff. Because poor little black man or half black, half white, whatever, became president of the United States. That showed you that they really don't want you. They sick the police on you in the New York second. And you, and you know, according to some of us, they say New York second is pretty quick. But at any rate, no offense to you New Yorkers. I'm just saying that that's the phrase they got. Look, you, you, come on, y'all. You know how it is. They, they say things. You, they, call, they say you all steal the cars, the tires off a car real quick. They say down here in Baltimore, they done renamed the city. They call it Body Moore Murder Land. So every little city got its own faults and failures because there are demons that have command or control over specific regions of the earth. And if you and I don't know this, then we'll be caught up in it and not understand sometimes why we're feeling the way we're feeling. So let's not play this thing cheap. So if killing the righteous becomes a full-fledged option under the reign of the beast, remember what Yahshua said. If they call him Belzebub, he's the master of the house. What do you think they're going to do for you and I? See, we're not looking at this thing the way that we ought to. A lot of times we just sitting back hoping that 
Don't nothing bad really come our way. Well, some bad stuff already here. Look at this book, The Big Nine. The Big Nine. Let me see if I got them. Badu, Apple, Tencent, Microsoft, Alibaba, IBM, Google, Amazon, and Facebook. These nine biggest country, companies how the tech titans and their thinking machines could warp humanity. What, what's so good about something being warped? You ever had that old, uh, I shouldn't ask this, but anybody ever had them old albums and old records from the 70s? If you put them in the wrong place and they get heat on them and be too hot, leave them in a the car somewhere, they will warp on you. You see people put them little albums on and go around and they keep on doing like this and skip on your favorite parts on the record. Well, here they're talking about whatever they got in their technology, nine of the biggest companies in the world are also in on it. Nine of the biggest companies are in on it. And whatever they're banking on, it could warp humanity. These are the type of things that white folks are writing about, complaining, talking about. It's us now, real Israel, that doesn't want to hear it. And let me say this, because I will not make an apology for this. Yahweh did the choosing, did the making of the manufacturing of the people. He did all that. Yahweh chose the people that he chose for whatever reason he called upon. They were there in that region of the world. That's what the first people looked like that were made. Come on, Israel. We're not saying all black people are Israel and ain't no white folk going to get sick. I can't teach that. I understand why a lot of the Hebrews there are angry and do teach that because they feel like some of you all really just don't deserve it. I saw something on the news earlier this evening, a tragedy that happened here in Baltimore. And both sides at the table are equally guilty for not understanding this. A poor little young white woman, a mother of two was working for Amazon as a delivery driver with her own personal car. And we know <clears throat> the suspect clearly was black. Took her car. She had the key fob. You can't go far with them cars if the key fob ain't in it. She had the key fob in her pocket while she got out to go make a delivery. And when she went to chase or pursue after the suspect who was stealing her car, somehow she got in front of the car and he ran her over. And backed up, got out, and went through her pockets, took that key fob, and kicked her on the way back to the car. Now, I'm not sure if she died or was injured real bad or whatever the case may be. But the story, she's still in the hospital. Broken hip, broken ribs, and all that. Now, let's be real. Little white woman, mother too, as sad as it was, you saw a picture on the news with that. Let's just be real. It was sad. But we also have to be real from both sides of the script. Because, see, we as black people, sometimes black people don't realize we are just three or four generations up and away from slavery. We haven't been free that long. So you white folk can't tell us to get over it. You haven't gotten over the stench of your own arrogance and what you have done to people. So watch how Yahweh speaks to all of us. To Yisrael first, saying, I will visit the iniquities of the, of the fathers upon the children. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. My grandmother lived to be 105. My father lived to be close to 85. I think it was 85. But my grandmother's mother and father were slaves. My grandma was born in 1889. You do the math. She passed away in 1994. She was 105. So my grandmother's mother and father were slaves. I want to make that record perfectly clear. They were slaves. They were around when we were freed as a people. Let's get that thing straight. So we're not that far up. Imagine the Klansman or the local attorney or the doctor at that time who could close his practice, put a hood on, and go through the town and lynch and terrorize black people less than 200 years ago. He could do it and died, having received none of the judgments of Yahweh. His children are born and pick right up in his seed. Then his children's children are born, and then their children are born. And then they have children who now grow up, and suddenly, children of the slave got the upper hand when it comes to crime and are doing things to you. Let's all be honest now. This is Yahweh returning the kindness of our evil upon us. We got to look at it for what it's worth. And I'm being honest with it. It was sad to see and or hear the story. But how many times have these things been done to black people and nobody went to jail? They ran the story simultaneously with the police in Baltimore, having committed all kind of crime, run people over, hit people with the cars, uh, 
did all kind of misconduct in office, get out of office, get fired well, and still get to keep a full pension <clears throat> functioning as a legally licensed criminal throughout the city. Nah, man, these things are injustices that only Yahweh can rain down upon people and bring to an end. A lot of times we don't want to see it come to an end. There's no other way. A lot of times we don't want to see it come to an end. How else can it end? Well, sad as it may be, Yahweh ain't playing with nobody in the earth. He ain't picking and choosing. The only favorites Yahweh got, and yes, he does have favorites. Those that love and obey him, they are his favorites. Let's not play them cheap. Israel first and also unto the Gentile. But again, you bring these things up. They switch it around and say you're racist. No, I switch it back on you and say you're racist because you can't even face the historical fact of what your forefathers have done. You don't want us to bring it up. You don't want us to preach it. You don't want to see it in the world, but yet it's sitting there. So now here you have the technological capability to pursue the children of Israel when they won't do what you want them to do and won't comply. Here you have the means and the technological capability to shoot them down and or kill them. Let's grab another story real quick. Listen to this. Army to receive next generation squad weapon in 2023. What year is it now? It's 2022. Again, the army to receive next gen squad weapon. Listen to this article. For the first time in decades, the army will field new rifles, automatic rifles and ammunition calibers with the first unit receiving the next generation squad weapons by fall of 2023, according to the makers of the weapon. After years of development and intense competition between major gun makers, the Army announced in April that Sig Sauer Incorporated, Sig, S-I-G, Sauer, S-A-U-E-R, Sig Sauer Incorporated will manufacture the service's next generation squad weapon. The 10-year firm fixed price follow on production contract is worth $4.5 billion. $4.5 billion in murder. Ain't no other way to say that. Four and a half billion in murder. But they all right with that. Their books out there asking, is targeted killing, drone killing, is aerial assassination moral? If you got to ask the question, you already know you're wrong. These are the types of things that's happening. Killing a man and blowing a man up from a satellite, from a drone that you see and suspecting people. I'm just bringing it up, Israel. I ain't write this stuff. Here, look, uh, here's the article. I spin it around. This is the type of stuff that they're doing to us. So we as the people of y'all, we got to at least be up on it. Don't get mad at the priesthood for delivering the mail. This is what you want, right? This is what you send tithes and offering to donate, to help people and help others come to understand it. That's how we've done it. Hey, I, hey you got some home somewhere that we don't know nothing about? I don't have one. Can't afford one. I work every day laboring with my hands in the thing that is tough, just like most of you. That's the only way it can really be done. And Yahweh will provide. Yahweh will heal. Yahweh will save. Yahweh will deliver. We got to know all of that and just calm down. I ain't really with a lot of the Hebrews out making too much noise. And I'm not saying hide that. I'm, saying, I'm just saying I ain't with all this arguing with everybody about every little point. Some people, sometimes you got to steer clear of them. Let them argue with them own self. Because when Yahweh's word get them, every man, no matter where he at, going to come to his senses in this earth one day and realize Yahweh is real. And we're going to answer to Yahshua whether we want to or not. Anyway, let's go on a little bit. You got to hear what this article says. Steve Rose, executive vice president at Six Hour. Sometimes you got to know the names. You got to name the names of your oppressor. Sometimes people acting goofy, doing stupid stuff. Sometimes you got to name the names. The scripture says again, them that sin, rebuke openly before all that others may fear. So here we are. This is the executive vice president. And it, it's 6.8 millimeter. Caliber ammunition is the key innovation. You hear what kind of gun they got? 6.7, 6.8 millimeter. You got 9 millimeter. Now here's something that called 6.8. The ammunition is the technology. It is the leap forward in capability, he said. The guns, although it's great to talk about them, they're simply the vehicle to deliver the technology and enable the ammunition to shine. So you see how they call it the technology. Six Sauer developed a lightweight metallic casing to pair with 6.8 millimeter ammunition already designed and manufactured by the United States. 
This allows the cartridge to withstand more pressure than conventional ammunition, resulting in greater velocity and accuracy without having to make the weapon physically bigger. So they striving to just keep the same weapon, make it like it is, but increase the velocity and the pressure of the thing. But meanwhile, just go and make your money, make your billions. And there's some four and a half billion dollar in the murder industry. Meanwhile, y'all jump up and get mad at, at, at somebody for preaching things that really will enlighten you if you just humble yourself and sit down and pay strict attention to how Yahweh has ordered our steps just well enough to deliver this. But right now, we need to treat the word of Yahweh as it comes forth out the house of Israel, treat it as a whole meal. Because we ain't laying back or snacking. We're doing the best we can, trying to put it out. Some days, I pray like you wouldn't believe. And I pray that y'all would lead me and guide me so that I may be able to teach us. Some days, I don't have the words in my vocabulary to get it all across to us. Some of the stuff that Yahweh just simply allows me to see. Because you ain't got nobody to talk to about it. To further your analysis of You ever, you ever been in a predicament where you got to talk about a thing or get a discussion on in order to get to what happened? I had that today with a brother that cursed me out. He called himself wanting to talk to me about it. And when I broke down to him the sickness of his behavior, letting him know and understand that essentially all that you said was something that you were thinking subconsciously anyway. And you know that you were thinking that or you would have never come back and tried to apologize. My point being, if you want to apologize, it's because you know that you were wrong. And if you know that you were wrong, you said it because you felt amped up because you had the devil juice in you to say it. But now you want to get mad and flip the script and make me feel like I'm the villain because not only did I say I accepted the apology, but you could tell that I just backed up off from him. I ain't got nothing to do with him because I'm not going to give you this space to get comfortable disrespecting me. I have enough going on in the earth already with us as Israel being put up on the chopping block to be hunted and be pursued by the world's most violent people. We ain't got no time to play. We ain't got no time for drama and arguments. Black men who are all just in their 50s, flipping out like three-year-olds. You expect a three-year-old to do that. And eh, Well, back in my day and age and a long time ago, you, you flip out on your parent, fall out if you want to. Parent snaps you up right there, suit my whack you on your backside two, three times. Suddenly you act right. So today, the children didn't get that. No children now grew up to be grown men and women. They flip out and spaz out over the least little thing. Got all this energy and all this juice. Sometimes they skin it in the neck on the guitar. Got all this energy and juice and want to fight. But can't fight a job application. Can't fight a mop and a broom. Can't fight their way out of wet paper bag. And we cow to this because we have not taught our children the value of life in obeying Yahweh. If we know anything about Revelations 6. Remember how he says here, verse 9, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yahweh and for the testimony which they held. Why were they killed? Obviously and clearly this is not a world that is a lover of the truth. Otherwise, they would have never slain them for the word of Yahweh. Can Yahweh lie? Did they deserve to die for just having the testimony that they held? But obviously the world ain't lovers of the truth. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Yahweh, Kodesh, and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So something dwelling on the earth that ain't right. And it's got the technological means to go after you and kill you. Keep in mind, Revelation 6, verses 1 through 11. If you know how to read it and know what you're looking at, it's a historical and prophetic assessment of a growth in time. And it outlines the simultaneous development of technology that's going to be used to pursue Yahweh's people. Laser lights, thermal imagery, voice recognition, uh, gait recognition, facial recognition, all of this stuff being put together for people that decide, well, let them run on with their world order. Let them do what they do. We'll stay clear of that. We're going to stay over here. We'll serve y'all. We got our little land or whatever it is. They ain't going for it. They want to make everybody go along with it. Only the devil would do that. Mind around. Only the devil would do that. So Israel, famine is in a situation now in life where famine can be engineered technologically. 
Is not famine and all of that mentioned in Revelation 6? The riders on the horse? Does it not mention energy shortages in the way where we come to see it? Does it not mention endless wars? They all have technology as part of the modern day ignition switch. And that's what this is all about. We may not want to acknowledge it. We may not want to see it. But we better live up to it. See, Daniel and Revelation lay out a historical slash prophetic assessment of that growth in time and just gives us the technology and, and teaches us this is what's unfolding. A lot of the preachers today, man, Israel, they can't see what's coming. They don't believe Yahweh and they don't believe that Yahweh going to do what he said he going to do. But yet one thing that Yahweh is doing, he's fighting. America is hit with floods and burning simultaneously. America's children are not learning and they're flipping out. The adults don't know what to do and they're flipping out. All kind of stuff is happening. Every week you're hearing about mass shootings. You're hearing about it so much that they don't bring it up no more because it's just a daily, regular occurrence. Be mindful of where you are. Be prayerful at all times. If you ain't got to rip and run these streets and do nothing stupid, then don't be out there ripping and running these streets. Hang tight and be patient. Wait on y'all. The technology of this world today, though the scripture teaches us there's nothing new under the sun, this is the first time that all this stuff has been combined in such a way where it can do the dirt and damage that if Yahweh leaves it unchecked, there will no flesh be saved. And that's terrible that the scripture would say something like that about the ruling class who always pride themselves on being right and just and the only ones that upright, we got money. Money don't make you Kodesh. So, Yisrael, I hope you understand this brief foretaste of how technology will emerge and drive the great tribulation. We have to pray. We have to pray hard. Pray to be sealed, pray to be delivered, pray to be kept from the hour of temptation, pray to not turn back, pray that Yah will make you real, make you strong in his word, and real and strong in such a way that your faith can never be altered. And if you do well, as Yahshua said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I rest assured on that. Thank you for tuning in. This is a Wednesday night, first Wednesday of the month, Torah study. We'll try to get more active with it, but I beg that you simply bear with us. We do a lot of work here. You, people might not see everything that's done. Sometimes we got calls and emails and texts. We got mailings and things we have to send out. We got a lot going on sometimes. And I, well, I may not always have the strength to take a phone call or to return a text immediately. Sometimes you get pushed down in the chain of command and different things. And then you forget some people. It's all right if you text me or call me back or hit me and remind me. It's all right. And, and I understand. I don't want to count none of y'all as people as a nuisance because somebody somehow, somewhere had to bear with me in my days of being a nuisance. So somebody prayed for me. I'm here today because of the results of somebody's prayer and the simplicity of the fact that Yahweh answered them, had mercy upon me, showed me his kindness and his favor. So let's do that to someone else. You don't necessarily know their name or know what state or what city they're in or what their financial shape or condition is. Yahweh knows as you pray for one another, send them prayers. Up. That is a spiritual base. That is a power. It is an energy. And the scripture says that men are to always pray and not to faint. I told Yahweh, I delivered that little bit of a message that I had. Didn't faint. I told Yahweh that we made it safely here. Pray that we make it back safely over the roadways. Deacon, thank you for coming out, hanging out with me. Minister, thank you for the same. Little House of Israel, I thank you all for your patience, for your steadfastness, all the, the men, the women, even little baby. We thank Yahweh for all of you, your little smiling faces. Pray for the different mothers and the sisters, people with cancers, high blood pressures, dialysis, and gout. Pray for one another. You may not know everybody, but pray that Yahweh be with us, even if he eases and give us more comfort in these days until he calls us off the scene. Whenever Yahweh calls and says, bring it on home, 
Ain't none of us got another choice but to answer the call. So pray my strength in Yahweh. I'll continue to do the same for each and every one of you. Yahweh willing, we'll talk with you on Shabbat Eve. May the blessings of Almighty Yahweh from now, henceforth, and forever rest upon all your dwellings, both in this world and in the world to come. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Good night.